The Dukes of Hazard was an unexpected success for CBS. The show had an impressive run of 147 episodes, spanning seven action-packed seasons. Guy Waldron and ex-moonshiner Jerry Rushing were the creative minds behind the iconic piece of television that aired from January 1979 to February 1985. The brothers Duke, Bo, and Luke were certainly known for their crazy antics. The good old boys from the very fictional Hazard County, Georgia, could often be seen jettisoning over rivers and valleys in the General Lee while narrowly escaping the grasp of the malevolent Boss Hogg. And of course, we could never forget about the voluptuous sweetheart Daisy Duke and those scandalously short shorts. Take a ride on the back roads with us as we explore some of the Dukes of Hazard's biggest secrets. Facts First presents The Dukes of Hazard Wardrobe Malfunction with Daisy Dukes. Before we crack open another jar of moonshine, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Tap the bell icon to turn on notifications so you can stay in the loop with all our latest videos. Stick around for the whole video to find out what almost went wildly wrong in all the right ways with Daisy's famously skin-tight apparel and how her denim shorts ended up in one of the world's most famous museums. John Schneider wasn't even a real redneck, but he certainly played a great one on TV. When he was only 18 and looking for his big break in show business, he stumbled upon auditions for a new show involving a couple of good old boy cousins on the wrong end of the law that routinely got themselves into the kind of trouble that only fancy car stunts flying through the air could get them out of. Who wouldn't want a role like that? So young Schneider decided to pull all the punches to try to get the part. Even though he was a New Yorker, he put on his best Southern accent and showed up for the audition in faded blue jeans and a cowboy hat. He even brought a six-pack of beer to seal the deal. He made a couple more false claims that impressed the producers enough to give him the part. He claimed he was 24 and a professional stunt driver. Spoiler alert, neither of those things was remotely true. Bo and Luke met in the bathroom. Yep, you heard that correctly. The two on-screen cousins and stars of the show met while they were taking care of their business in the bathroom. Actor and singer Tom Wopat was called to the studio for a screen test, and Schneider had yet to meet him. When the two were both in the bathroom beforehand, however, they struck up a conversation through the stalls after Tom noticed Schneider had a guitar. Why he had a six-string in the bathroom stall, we may never know. The two hit it off before they ever saw each other. So when both of them flushed and left the bathroom, they soon found themselves on set with each other. This chance encounter in the lavatory may have been the added boost the two needed to sync up their on-screen chemistry. Daisy Duke was initially inspired by Dolly Parton. Producers were really pining for Daisy to essentially be a carbon copy of the busty country music icon. They envisioned her as an aspiring country music singer that would always be decked out in glitzy turtlenecks, absurd go-go boots, and a larger-than-life blonde wig. Catherine Bach, on the other hand, had other ideas. She decided to pick a few items out from her own wardrobe to see what would happen. Barely there short shorts, a tight t-shirt, and cowboy boots became the look that she would be remembered for generations. So instead of a cut-and-paste Dolly Parton clone, she became a character that was uniquely her own, with the folksy charm and dazzling injection of personality that only Katherine Bach could have conjured up. The show wasn't expected to make it. It definitely seemed like a long shot at the time for the CBS executives to sign on to. They had only expected it to be a short-lived fill-in for a slot left open by the Captain America series that had just bit the dust. William Paley, chairman of the network at the time, had a very vocal disdain for the show, going as far as calling it lousy. Joke's on him, though, the show exploded in popularity. At its peak, it was seeing 46 million views per episode, and it lasted for an impressive seven seasons. Oh yeah, there's all the merchandise and spin-offs, films, and even video games that were inspired by the franchise. But yeah, lousy, right. The Dukes of Hazard was a true story, sort of. Or at least it was inspired by one. The popular series was based on a film from 1975 called Moon Runners, which was in itself a true story about moonshining brothers Jerry and Johnny Rushing. The brothers took their illicit liquor to the road in a custom 1958 Chrysler 300D. Their car was named after Confederate General Robert E. Lee's horse, Traveler, and was equipped with a special piece of machinery that would dump an oil slick behind them to help escape the police. Nope, that doesn't sound familiar at all. The most popular character wasn't even human. The 1969 Dodge Charger, affectionately known as the General Lee, struck a chord with audiences despite employing the controversial symbolism of the Confederate flag and being named after a Confederate general. In 2015, Warner Brothers would place a ban on the production of toys and other merchandise that included the Confederate flag, so that obviously included the General Lee. Despite the controversy surrounding the vehicle, viewers sent over 35,000 pieces of fan mail to the General Lee per month, far more than any other cast member. Yes, even Daisy. 
they put the General Lee through a beating. Whenever you saw that orange streak going through the sky, plummeting over rivers, ravines, and on one occasion even a moving train, it was the real deal. They didn't have fancy schmancy CGI like we do today. Fortunately, no performers were ever injured in the production of the show, but the General Lee sure took one heck of a whopping. It's rumored they had to obtain over 150 different chargers throughout the show's tenure. This wasn't a problem until Dodge Chargers got harder to come by. By the mid-80s, the car had become drastically less common. Not only did the production of Dukes of Hazard itself put a strain on the supply chain, but the model they needed stopped being in production for over a decade, so they became harder and harder to obtain. The solution? Whenever the crew saw Chargers driving around town, they would stop the driver and attempt to purchase their car outright. Even still, for the final season, they would be forced to use remote control miniatures for many of the show's stunts. Daisy Duke's wardrobe malfunction. Well, before you get your hopes up, we should probably clarify there would be more wardrobe malfunctions involving the Southern Belle if it weren't for the input of the show's producers. Catherine originally wanted to wear much shorter shorts than the ones she would eventually come to wear. The network would have totally censored that if she went through with it. So they made some stipulations about her wardrobe if she wanted to keep the look she was already rocking. They requested she wear skin-toned pantyhose underneath her shorts to prevent any wardrobe mishaps. Fortunately, however, the denim shorts she was so well known for wearing would go on to bear her name. Getting an article of clothing named after you is nothing short of leaving behind a legacy. The Other Duke Boys In 1981, during the show's fifth season, merchandising alone brought in over $190 million for the studio. Schneider and Wopat, who had received only 25 grand apiece in royalties over the years, were wondering where their piece of the pie was. So they figured it was in their best interest to file a lawsuit against Warner Brothers in 1982. The studio put their feet down and refused to pay up. The Duke boys threatened to hightail it out of there and quit if they didn't get fair pay. Instead of immediately yielding to their demands, CBS decided to replace their characters with Coy and Vance Duke, played by Byron Cherry and Christopher Mayer, respectively, for season six. Fans of the show were furious, and the show's ratings took a nosedive. CBS was forced to strike a deal with Schneider and Wopat and cede to their demands if they wanted the show to keep making money. Smooth move, CBS. Way to alienate your fans. Daisy Dukes, Daisy Dukes went on display at the Smithsonian. It's no secret the show's success was somewhat aided by sexy Daisy's alluring attire, but apparently they were more than just iconic. The Smithsonian Institution deemed them to be a crucial piece of American history. The shorts were displayed alongside other famous props from the entertainment industry, including Indiana Jones's whip and hat and Dorothy's ruby slippers. Yes, those Daisy Dukes became a national treasure. We certainly hope you enjoyed taking a closer look at the many secrets of the Dukes of Hazard. Now, we'd love to hear from you. Who do you think was the bigger star of the show? Daisy Duke in her skimpy shorts or General Lee? Sorry, Luke and Bo, it's nothing personal. Let us know what you think in the comments section. Feel free to tell us about your favorite episode as well if you feel like it. And before you move on to something else, do us a little favor and tap the like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already.